morning everyone. So we're going to be doing an acrylic painting of a cake. Yummy. How can that be a bad thing? Um, first of all, if you're going to do that, you're going to need your reference image. Obviously always links are below. This is by Cespian Kornman. Um, beautiful. It looks like a cheesecake. Strawberry and blueberry on top. White cake, yeah, it looks cheesecakey to me. But anyway, so I've got reference image there, which I'm gonna do. Um, I've got my paints here. Now, for the paints, I'll go through the colors in a minute, but you can see that I have just got a huge quantity of different brands. It really doesn't matter if you're using acrylics. You know, you can mix and match. As long as they're all acrylics, it should work. I've poured those out on my Stay Wet palette, which I've prepped, okay? I've got my piece of paper down here. This is uh, 240 GSM cartridge paper so it's nice and smooth. It's had a bit of a hard life but it's going to get covered in paint so it doesn't really matter. I'm working on A4 scale so you can see there I've just drawn around my piece of paper to make sure I get the scale correct. Then I've got a pot of water and I've also got some slow dry which will make life a bit easier because there's going to be some blending required in that. That's where the stay wet palette comes in as well and keeps everything wet so that you can blend colours quite smoothly. I also have uh, a, a few different brushes. I've got some more brushes next to me that I might pick up as I go along. So you can see I am generally got some small pointed head brushes for the drawing stage and then I've got some bigger head brushes for doing the coverage of the paint. Um, the bigger headed ones have a nice long handle so it means that I can get some beautiful smooth sweeping brush marks as well. Short handles are nice and tight for drawing. Long handles give you more kind of expressive, luscious kind of brush marks. So consider which type of brush you're using when you're getting into this. Now, let's go through the colors, shall we? I take off my lid and put that down there. I have got titanium white down here. Then I've got ivory black, and generally I have an ivory black because I do a lot of portraits, so the ivory black's general black that I use. You could use a Mars black, it'd be absolutely fine, it's not an issue. Um, and commonly found where the ivory is a little bit more expensive and rarer. Then I am going cadmium yellow, so I've got my hot yellow. I got my cold yellow, my lemon yellow. I've got my hot red, cadmium red. I've got my cold red, crimson red. I've got my hot blue, ultramarine. I've got my cold blue, cobalt blue. That sounds like I'm gonna go into some kind of song, doesn't it really? The rhythm there. But that gives you a layout here. I've left a load of space for my color mixing options. So let's get down and get this drawn out shall we i'm going to go for a number two brush which is pointed i stick those um in my white paint that would be very practical of me of course and i'm going to mix up a color to draw with <clears throat> so generally what you're looking at doing is creating something fairly light that's not too dark because you're going to paint over the top of it and if you paint any white or light colors over a dark um, you, you usually only have to do a few layers to get the coverage. If you draw in a lighter colour, it makes life a lot easier. So, kind of like a, an orange. It's pretty good, a soft orange tone. You can find that some artists prefer to make a brown, so I'd then make the orange, like I've just done using two cadmiums. Add in an ultramarine blue and that will make it a bit browny. Actually, I'm going to do that now because I'm guessing on the camera you'll see it a little bit better but I would recommend generally that you keep to a softer, lighter tone so that you can cover it up. I'm gonna grab a little bit of water just to make it more of an inky consistency and that will make it stay wet for longer on my palette plus give me a little bit more easier handling of the paint. Now when you're looking at the paint and you can see that on the brush you generally don't want it going up the ferrule, it's not ideal. You need to grab a tissue and wipe that down. Now when you're doing a fine drawing, you're looking at trying to keep the paint just on like this top half of the hair. As soon as you start hitting the ferrule and you're getting that bulk in the paint that you could see earlier a moment, well, a moment ago, um, that will give you an uneven brush mark and it will also get messy. It'll go up your ferrule, you can get it on your hands, you can get cross contamination. It's just really bad process. So try and keep your paint on the tip of your brush or use a tissue if you get a little bit too excess in. Now, this is quite an easy drawing to get down. You can see, first of all, I've got this oval shape here and I've got this vertical line on the edge of the cake. Plus I've got a little bit of a kind of running parallel 
arch coming down here and then I've got a little bit of plate coming up here. So it's easier to get this line in first here on the edge of the cake and I'm looking at how big that gap is in relationship to this side and it's quite skinny isn't it? It's small. Now I'm going by eye and I could if I wanted to use some kind of logic. This is half the size of this piece of A4 roughly. So that means that the A4 is double the size of the, the reference image. Therefore that gap on here should be double the size. Uh, I'll just draw that in around there. Now I'm being really messy, which is fine, because with acrylics you'll find that you're going to be painting over the top of things and um, working it in. Now I'm holding the brush towards the end, try and get an arch shape, and I don't worry if I get like too too high up. So that's too high up, that needs to come down. I'm grabbing my brush. Now I'm going to cut this picture off and make it a little bit smaller on that side because I think it's a little bit bigger, the A4, than it should be, in the aspect ratio. And I'm looking, so I've got the cream section and then the biscuit. Try and hold that brush right towards the end, so you can get the arch. You're moving much more from your shoulder shape, shoulder, than your wrist. You should feel the movement of the brush mark come down through, well, up through your arm if you're doing it correctly. You can see there, very simple cake. Okay, now I've got that, then I need to start plotting in all the little bits of components, such as the strawberries and they look like buttercups, but I don't know, can you eat buttercups? I have no idea. So let's look at putting these in. Again, try and keep your eye on the reference picture more than your painting. Keep things simple. So if I point where I'm looking at this moment, you'll see what I'm doing. Right. So there you go, you've got very simple sketching, should just be very quick, very loose. It's not going to be perfect, but it's setting up the bare bones of the drawing, okay? So don't worry about it being perfect because as you paint, you'll find that because with this image, like a lot of the images we use, everything is, is, is interconnected. Therefore, if you start going slightly wrong, um, and you find like you don't have enough room for a strawberry or a flower, you know that you need to jiggle things around and re-establish those. Now the other thing I'm putting in down here is just the reflection on the platter. And you can see here, I'm right to cut that side off because I just needed to be a little bit shorter than an A4 piece of paper. I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna start mixing some base colors. Right, so now what I'm going to look at doing is mixing up a basic colour for each part of the painting. This is really good practice within the acrylics. Acrylics directly onto a piece of paper like I've just done is very porous, it sucks the water out. As soon as the water is sucked out of the acrylics, it dries very fast. That's why with a stay wet palette, everything's about being wet to keep the paint wet. Um, if you put down a base colour for each core component of the picture, that means that that base layer, which is made from acrylic paint, acrylic paints are plastic um, in nature, stops the absorption of the water in the next layer of painting and gives you more time to blend a section. Now I'm going to go to a slightly bigger brush. Okay, let's mix up some colours. I'm going to put in this white down here for the cream. Now, I'm going to add in a little bit of cadmium yellow to make it creamy or it's going to look very bleached out. And then I'm going to just start putting that in. Right, so now while I'm on those whites, um, because I've got the white on the brush, you can see that white on the edge there, the highlight of the tray, I'm going to just in a little bit of white coming down that tray and I can 
see some of the white on top with the reflection down here on the bottom of the platter. Then if I add a little bit of black in, just to create a grey tone. And don't worry if this isn't perfect, if your grey is too dark or if it's too light, it really doesn't matter at this stage. You're just putting down a base colour to paint on top of to stop the paper absorbing all the pigment that you're going to start working up. It's also helpful because you're starting to absorb um, into your mind, hopefully, the shape of things. So for instance here I can see the curvature cream on top and it's characters like that within a painting that will make it look and appear. It will make it appear realistic. Now obviously this is a more complex section to lay down these base colours in. So it's up to you whether you want to get into that now or whether you want to get that background in. I'm going to just do the grey up here for the background while I've got the pigment all mixed up on here. That's an ultramarine blue which will give me a, a nicer background. Now the trick with acrylics is that you really need to mix up a decent quantity. You get for a lot more paint than you anticipate and you can find it very difficult to remix exactly the same tone that you've just put down. So it's always wiser to have too much um, and to throw some away than it is to try and get away with the bare minimum that you can do and find that you have to remix that exact colour to get it right again. And acrylics do work a little bit like oils. Um, they can have a habit of one colour, if it's sitting underneath another colour, influencing one another. So by putting down this base colour, if you do do anything really strong or dark, you will find that when you put a lighter colour on the top of it, it will deaden it a little bit. It's usually wise to play it a bit safe and to have a lighter colour than you actually anticipate in that area to be, especially for this first layer of painting. Let's get this creamy biscuit area down. Get a little bit of white in there. A little bit of red. Make it orangey. And get that biscuit layer in. Like that. I will have that biscuit layer mirrored. In the reflection, so I'm going to put that down there as well. Now I'm getting to the point where I need to do the strawberries and all the berries and the flowers on top of the cake. Because I've already got a little bit of yellow out, I thought I'll go for the yellow and get those yellow flowers in to start off with. Take a little bit of white and some yellow and add a little bit of cadmium should get a nice buttercup yellow and then let's just put these in so, and like I said don't worry if it's not perfect you're going to be painting into it it's just a base colour that we're starting up from now this is a very strong red um, that's a cadmium I'm going to soften it down with a little bit of white put that in for my strawberry areas and you're going to be thinking, oh my god, this looks like a bit of a car crash at this point. Don't worry about it. This is, like I said, just the thought process. You're finding, kind of figuring out in your head where things are, what you're going to do as you work through. And warming up those um, little creative neurons in your brain. Okay, let's get a little bit of crimson in there. Let's create a bit of darker berry sauce and I've got the purpley berry sauce so if I add a little bit of ultramarine blue into the crimson I'll get a plummy shade and just add some of that in right create that purple the pansy Cake. Oh, I've taken 
and that purple. I've added a little bit of white just to lighten it. Then it's about playing around with the quantity of blue or crimson, or ultramarine blue or crimson in the mix. The more crimson you put in, the more plum it'll go. The more blue you add in, the more lilac-y the shade will be. I'm just gonna plodge that in there. Okay. Right, now at this stage, it's a good plan to wash your brush out thoroughly because acrylics will wreck it if you leave it on there to give yourself some clean water allow this five minutes just to dry off and then we can start working up the detail i'll see you in a moment right so now that i've got the basic layers down they're not perfectly dry but they're fundamentally dry they're good enough to work on i've got a fresh piece of tissue and i've got some fresh clean water for my brush now whenever you're trying to create a realistic painting, you start off with your biggest brush and then you slowly work down to your smallest brush. If I jumped from this brush, which is what I was using a minute ago, um, to this brush, I'd probably have problems. I'd be here forever as well to try and get the, the coverage that I need at this stage. This is a number six. Um, they're all meant to be consistent in the brush sizing, but they're really not from my experience of life, the universe and everything. So I'm going to jump down just looking at eye use your eye okay don't worry about the numbers that are on the brush mark brushes um i'm gonna grab this one it looks like it's had a bit of a hard life but it'll do um and this is a number 10 so it doesn't make any sense that that's a number six and this is 10 this is smaller than that one isn't it? you can see the head so don't worry about that just look at gradually decreasing the brush size that you're working in now we've got to work in and get this far more accurate um and because it's a secondary layer we can start building up some tonal changes. Tonal changes is where something gets light to dark. It's clear here, for example, on the cream, that this is much lighter here and it gets darker over here. Now, dark does not mean hard shadows. It can do, but you can see here, there is a subtle change and that's absolutely fine. You could use that there. So let's just get that down, shall we? I'm gonna take some white and then I'm gonna make a little bit more of a kind of it's quite a good cream, creamy shade. I've got some hard white to my right, some creamier white to my left, and I need to get the two to work together. It can be easier to use two brushes. So I've got one brush with my kind of creamy yellow and one brush with my white. It's better to generally work light towards the dark. So if I'm putting this white on here, thicker the paint, the longer it's going to take to dry as well, so keep that in mind. Then I'm going to grab my other brush, which has got the creamier tone in it, and put in a little bit of cream. Then if I grab my lighter brush, which has got some white, then I can work that lighter white into the wet creamier area that I have. So I can build up a gradual change from very hard white to a soft, creamier shadow. So, do try and keep the paint really thick on the surface of the paper. It'll make blending a lot easier. You also want to cover up any previous kind of bits of colour mixes. So, it's always wise to have the paint nice and thick because that'll cover up previous sins. And there you go. Can you see that change? Probably not so much because it's quite a gentle change, but the idea is always the same throughout this, wherever you're doing light to dark and you've got to create a small blend. The smaller blending sections, such as on the strawberry, are much tougher than a large area. Larger areas are easier to blend. So let's put in down here, you can see it happening with the kind of biscuit crumble base. I'm gonna clean my brushes. So let's make up this biscuit. I've got already a very light, soft mixture here. I could add a little bit more white if I want to lighten it a bit more. Probably gonna need to get a little bit more white paint out because I'm getting through that quite quickly. And then to darken it, I'm gonna add a little bit more of the red. It's a browny shade, isn't it? So remember to make the brown, make the orange, and then add in a little bit of the blue ultramarine blue is good at giving you a, a nice brown of academy and red. 
mark if I put that in. And I'm going to grab some of that darker. Bring that in. And if you wanted to, you could always get another brush which is clean and dry and smooth the two together. find that you add in maybe a little bit more crumbly shadow on that bit then wipe down that dry brush and just blend it in to the wet base now why I've got that and you can see like the cream is zigzagging over here it's also quite textured and nice I'm gonna grab some more white out and we're gonna work that up more let's get a little bit of that creamy yellow and then let's make some lovely thick brush marks. And you can pick up a little bit of white if you wanted to. Make it whiter around here. But use the paint as if you're kind of plastering. Really nice and thick. Look of light bouncing off the white cream because white bounces colours around. Get the orange and add in a little bit of black. Covering evenly, getting some texture. All right, so you've got that creamy section now well on its way. Just clean those brushes out and we'll start working up some of the biscuit. Smaller brush this time. And we're just making lots of different kind of orangey browns. It should be pushing your colour mixing to the max. Obviously you're going to end up finding that you're going to need to make some lighter shades. And that it's quite textured. So consider how you're applying the brush marks. You can see here I'm dabbing up and down. And then I'm going to grab some darker brown. So into that. I'm also dabbing. I'm going to use a smaller brush just to put in that darker shadow from the palette that it's sitting on. Using a little bit of white and black. And that will just define the edge a little bit more and give you that illusion. Right, and then we just work up again because we've got that mirror reflection, it's just a little bit more murky. Let's bring that in. Now, a lot of the time with reflections, the key is just to look at where it needs to be light and where it needs to be dark. You can get away with a lot of sins if you get the light and darks in the right place. Okay, so I've done some basic detail down here. I'm just playing around with it and get a feel for how thick I want the paint to be, where the highlights are and things like that. Now, this is still fairly wet because I put it on really thick to get that cake creamy texture. So I'm going to be careful, but I'm going to work up here. That should dry off in a minute once I've got these um, cleaned out and some fresh water. Right, so let's get in and start doing some of the strawberries and other bits, shall we? Now when you're working with any painting, you start off with your larger brush and then you work down to your smaller brushes. Smaller brushes give you more detail, larger brushes give you coverage of a pigment and can be easier for quicker blending of a section. Because these sections of strawberries, flowers, berries are quite small, you're going to need to come down with a smaller brush size. It's going to hopefully push a lot of your colour mixing skills as well. So let's work on this strawberry down here in the front. Right, so start painting in the sections now and refining the detail a little bit more. Okay, making sure things are in the right place and the right size. You can also play around with the tone within each core section. So for instance here with the flower petal, I'm laying down a very soft, light, creamy shade which I'm going to build up and make it a little bit more intense the yellow. It's quite a labour intense way of working 
but you'll get very good results from it. Right, so you can see how I'm starting to work up a little bit of tone and detail in various areas. I'm going to just bring in a little bit of green stalk on that flower. So if I just make up a green quickly using some cadmium yellow and a little bit of cobalt blue. It's not going to be perfect, it's just kind of placement, size, locations. And refining everything, getting it all in the right position. And then working up from that various different other areas, so around where the stem is. So you've got that cherry jam. And I'm kind of just putting that in. It's not heavily detailed as in tone. It's about getting the place correct. Just gradually work up the detail. Just as you can see that I'm doing. I'm going to be very careful. should end up with something that looks like that. Alright, so what you're looking at doing is mixing a good base colour for the strawberries. Cadmium red and lemon yellow will create a good base colour. Then use a fine brush and start applying that into the strawberry that you're going to be working on. You need it nice and thick so that it gives you some time to work out the detail on the strawberry see here just like I'm doing. Then if you look at how the strawberry actually goes up and down because the light is coming through some parts of the skin, it's translucent, I've then mixed in a little bit more lemon yellow to create an orangey shade and I'm using that for wherever I need the strawberry to get a little bit lighter. So I'm putting that down and I'm kind of dabbing my brush and swirling it around that section of the strawberry. Then you can grab a little bit of white and work that in just to boost the highlight on that strawberry. Try and again keep the brush quite loose and lively, being kind of very good at your observations of where the light needs to come and also the texture and how the light is hitting around the texture of the strawberry because it's got those seeds on it. Now then, I'd recommend getting some of your lemon, uh, lemon, I'd get some cadmium actually, it's going to be a bit stronger, and start putting in some of the seeds where you can see them. Try and follow the seed pattern, if you don't it's going to look like it's been a bit pebble dashed by accident. They do follow a pattern, so try and be accurate at your patterns and observations. Then while that main base colour is still wet, if you grab a little bit of your shadow colour, and I've been using the jam shade, and work in a little bit of shadow into that wet base red area, using a very small pointed brush, as you can see like I'm doing here. If you get too much, just dip your brush off, clean it with some water, dry the brush, and then pad it back in. Because you've got that wet surface, you'll be able to kind of dip and weave that shade around the wet red base colour that you've been using. If you want, you could always pick up a little bit more red and dilute that shadow shade into the strawberry area. Now I've done it at each end because I wanted it lighter in the middle. Then I've got that very kind of washed out tone for where the skin's been cut. So I am getting a little bit of white, mixing it in with that red that I was using on the strawberry and start painting that down where you're seeing that centre whiteness of the strawberry. you should end up with something that looks kind of like that. The more you do it, the more accurate your observations are, the better the strawberry will look. Do be careful about water. You can see this brush is particularly bad at picking up a lot of water when I'm cleaning it, so I have to keep dampening it off the surface of the picture. But 
in the process of having the water problem it does mean that I get a little bit more room to play with and mix in the colours on the surface of the picture rather than on my palette. And the jam is the same kind of process. You have a few colours for each area and then look at taking it up and down. So with jam, laying down a basic colour which might be a darkish lilac colour, that's what I've been using. You will then usually want to get a little bit of pink because there's a lot of reflections from the strawberry so if you use a strawberry colour and then work that in and swirl it into the wet areas of the acrylic. Then if you've got any strong highlights just pick up your white on your, the end of your brush and dab them in. With highlights the less you have the more powerful the ones kind of look that you do apply to the surface. So be careful about not putting too much of a highlight on the areas or it just won't read correctly. The other thing with the acrylics is um, you can dilute them down so it's a little bit more of a translucent paint and therefore you can get certain areas where it comes through quite nicely if you're building up multiple reflections and layers of different colours. So around certain parts of the jam that can work quite nicely. But it just depends on how much time and effort you want to put into the picture. I do use occasionally a little bit of black in my lilac mix just to give myself a really strong hard hit of shadow. That works quite well as well. But you should still have a slight purpley twang to it. It shouldn't look completely black if you're going to do it. It will be quite strong. So keep that in mind and try and wet the picture as a whole or it'll just look kind of segmented and not quite work well. So that's roughly how you're looking at doing the fruit. It gives you a good intro into that. Now while that's drying, let's put in this really dark background. So I'm going to use a bit of black, some white, maybe a grey tone. And then add a bit of ultramarine blue so it doesn't look too flat. And if you look, you can see how it gets lighter in certain areas. So let's have a look, see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks actually pretty good. Some areas we're going to need to increase the white content, just so that it gives a different kind of definition. All right, and then it's going to be working up again the cake section. So I'm just going to wash out my water because it's going to cause horrible cross contamination. This cake is very light, so you will definitely see it if you have horrible contamination, and ensure that my brushes are clean as well before I get down to that section. Right, so let's just go down here and increase the darker shadow along that section using a small brush again. I'm going to use the grey that I used for the background because it's reflective so it'll work quite well. You can see how it comes out and there should be a texture. Can you see those lumps and bumps in there? We need to get that in that platter so let's just get that up here. I think also the platter needs to come up a little bit. I'm not quite sure got enough height on my original platter so I'm going to bring that in and I'm going to bring that in a little bit more as well so that means that the platter needs to come up higher and it looks like there's part of the platter coming around here you see disappearing and then you get the rest of the platter coming in around here Let's work this up a little bit more. Just soften off this brush line as well. It's going to be really playing around with your adding your white in, working it onto the surface so that you can change the tone of that wet paint as it comes out and make it appear more reflective. Okay, so you can see there, that's a very quick version showing you how to play around with the acrylics to get a realistic result. The more time you've got, the more you can mix your colours and become accurate and the smaller the brushwork you can create. But this gives you a good intro.
I hope you've enjoyed it and get loads of practice, play around with handling the acrylics, making things lighter and darker and see what you can achieve. See you next time everyone, bye!